All right, hello, hello. Uh, there we go. Yo, everybody. Welcome back to Dink Podcast. My name is Justin. Uh, this is episode 478. Yeah, yeah, we, we skipped a week. Apologies about that. Uh, as you can see, doing a little bit of a solo cast this time around. Uh, it looks like a lot of people are just kind of busy. <laughs> what is it? Uh, Naya's always like working on the crafts. Uh, Phil wasn't able to join us, but hopefully we'll be able to like reconnect with him soon. And Mark's currently in the middle of a D&D sesh. So hopefully he'll be able to get out. But considering D&D sessions, I'm not getting my hopes up. <laughs> it's it's just the truth, dude. Like if you're if you're committed to like a full fledged like D and D like campaign, the chances of you being able to get out of that in a reasonable time is always like fluctuating. I'm sure about that. It'd be crazy if we did our own like thing for that. We we've done D and D sessions before, like kind of outside of you know like Dang It or Tanuki, but yeah, it, it's that's a real tough one to really like balance off of. How's everyone doing? It's Saturday. Uh, it is the last weekend of October, and I got a little bit of mixed feelings because one, it's been it was a great uh, month, uh, just because you know TwitchCon was there, and uh, we're gonna be talking about TwitchCon as well. Give you little guys a little pseudo summary about like the things that happened because obviously we didn't really do a podcast during that time frame. Couldn't do it, and I and I went, and uh, we weren't really able to do much we were actually pretty busy which i'm happy about but i'm saddened too because i couldn't like keep up the weekly podcast it's been like a tradition we we're kind of on and off like uh a little less traditional as far as keeping that strict regimen of having a weekly podcast but even so it's, it's just kind of sucks to not have that always openly available but or readily available for people to like check out but as i as i try to burp <laughs> as i burp out my lunch yeah, uh, we're going to be recapping a little bit of TwitchCon. We're going to be talking about things that happened this past week and um, other things that have just really mattered to me. Like a little bit of, um, what is that word? Housekeeping. Because I need to do that a little bit more often. Guys, over on the Tanuki channel, exclamation point Tanuki, uh, we got uh, new episodes of a new starting series that Nia has actually been posting. It's, uh, what was it, Avid Soulsborn. He's playing through Lives of P. Hence the Soulsborn title of it. Uh, he's posted episodes one and two, and he should be posting stuff later on, uh, going on forward in the future. Uh, we had another uh, short that was released uh, during the time frame of me being gone for TwitchCon. Uh, oh, actually, two shorts actually, and that would be um, Philip's uh, Game of the Week, which is Freedom Finger. It's a it's a first person shooter, I believe, and it's just one of those that's just a little hidden gem. As far as just like, honestly, well, actually, you know what? That's one thing I wanted to say is the fact that I would have loved to see some game gameplay integrated into the short so I could really just see it for myself. But from what I understand, it's one that you should like all first person shooter lovers should definitely just have in your catalog. Uh, I actually made a short myself um, you know, during TwitchCon. And actually, I, um, I got this little thing, this little package prior to uh, heading over to like Las Vegas for TwitchCon. And it was actually the Xbox uh, console wrap. And if you guys don't know about that, it's essentially, uh, it's uh, the equivalent to PlayStation 5's uh, cover plates where you can actually like switch them out and give them like different colors and designs. Uh, obviously you can customize it yourself, but you know, these are officially licensed like uh, plates. In this case, it's the same with the Xbox wraps there. Uh, they're made of like, uh, a specialized type of fabric slash plastic uh, that wrap around your entire console to give it a different aesthetic. Uh, so far, we only have those for the uh, Series X, but I got the special Starfield one, which when I look at that, I'm like, you know, it would be really nice if they released the Xbox like wrap for Starfield a little bit earlier, uh, or at least shipped out earlier within the time frame of the console or at least the game's release, because it's been like a month or so, so it's kind of a it's kind of lost that luster in the relevancy, but I will say, considering my Switch dock, uh, the, the Series X and the PlayStation Five, having like any type of white color onto the Xbox kind of helps match that like white aesthetic. So that says that that's it's pretty nice actually. I do appreciate that in hindsight. But uh, yeah, I oh yeah, just, and so yeah, that, that's pretty much our housekeeping on Tanuki side. On Dang It side, actually, Dang It Pro. Um, we have obviously taken like quite a week off, like from stuff. So there wasn't like a manga chapter coming out. 
Um, we didn't have a podcast episode, hence this is this is four seventy eight. And um, anyone who's been following the My Hero reads, uh, we'll be doubling up on chapters. So, uh, whatever the previous chapter releasing, followed by Sunday's released chapter, we'll we'll conjoin them together and we'll put that into one video. So, so far, no spoilers on my end. Uh, knock on wood, that's great. <laughs> I've only seen like spoilers for the previous one and I didn't even remember what exactly that was. It was probably, well, actually I probably really shouldn't say because that's ultimately a spoiler in that regard. So I'll just kind of leave that alone. <laughs> um, I guess all their sides, like on what I've been doing, um, I'm gonna tell you right now, TikTok has been kind of slow for me personally, because I'm the guy who's been posting a lot of Pokemon tidbits, how to's, uh, updates regarding just the more recent um, stuff in regards to uh, the Teal Mask DLC for uh, Scarlet and Violet. And it, right now it's just been kind of slow as far as just the news and whatnot. So um, until, you know, Indigo Disc comes out, um, I wouldn't have any other additional news for Pokemon aside from maybe some extra events stuff going on. But uh, I do want to, and this kind of chains over to um, some games I have in front of me. Some pickups, actually, I should say, too, because <laughs> uh, we didn't even cover that last time. But, yeah, I haven't really been um, doing much aside from the Pokemon stuff on TikTok, and I want to kind of branch out just for the sake of being able to put more content there, you know, especially with a series that has, like, kind of a, I would say, a dissipating um, bit of trendingness, I guess, for lack of better words, because, you know, uh, when it comes to, you know, short-form content, and I think the TikTok platform as it is, um, and I would also say to a certain extent Twitch, but Twitch has also been open for like retro gaming stuff uh, in general. But I guess for short form content, uh, relevancy is pretty important. And, you know, with games coming out like Mar Super Mario Bros. Wonder and uh, Spider-Man 2, a lot of attention to other games releasing kind of like kind of go away. Not to say ultimately that, you know, you should be playing this game when it releases like during this time window. Otherwise, you're irrelevant. That's not what I'm trying to say. Uh, but as far as like posting stuff on TikTok, it's or I guess other short form stuff, whether it be there or I guess YouTube shorts and whatnot, uh, albeit you're better off posting shorts just period instead of just leaving it alone. <laughs> um, there is there is a bit of like trendiness and there is, um, you know, a viewing demographic uh, potential that you can garner from that if you decide to do things uh, promptly, which is why. Uh, that one to like kind of pivot off of that. Um, I'll be starting, I'll be starting some content sub regarding these two games. These are, uh, pickups as well. Uh, Spider-Man and, uh, Mario Brothers Wonder. I picked these up, uh, at Vegas actually during, um, I guess Thursday night because they released that Friday, but it was through GameStop that they have like the early midnight launch, which I really couldn't take advantage of except for like maybe getting like the sticker sheet for Mario Brothers Wonder. It's very nice, for sure, but I wasn't able to play these games. I guess I could have with with Wonder. I had my Switch on me, but it was one of those things where like I didn't know what I wanted to do with the game because obviously I'd like to do some content on this, whether it be like just live streaming it or making certain videos about it. But I didn't know what I wanted to do. By now, I know what I want to do, and that is to kind of weave it together with YouTube and you know TikTok stuff where. I will just show everybody, you know, how to find like the certain coins. It would just be a pretty like, I, I, I wouldn't say too simplistic or like bare bones, but I will just give like some walkthroughs as far as like how to find certain coins here and there, because obviously there are going to be some that are going to be a little harder to find for sure. And maybe like for the harder levels, like the whole special world, I know about that. Uh, maybe just do a quick walkthrough of like the certain patterns that you might want to like follow through with that. So there's that as well. Um, same thing with Spider-Man. Um, although Spider-Man is more of a collectopedia type of thing. So I don't think there's going to be a lot of like issues finding things here and there, but, um, yeah, no, I will probably have like a let's play on this one as well as maybe some videos about that. But yeah, I think we'll be focused on like walk, like just kind of going through the, the main campaign and everything like that. Uh, as far as it being where it's going to be put on. So YouTube, TikTok, I'm not sure about Twitch though. Twitch is something where it's like, I kind of want to keep doing the RPG stuff. We're still playing through Trails in the Sky, uh, SC, and, uh, we still got a ways to go. Last time we actually did a stream 
and it was we pretty much started chapter six and i've been taking kind of a sweet time on that one in the sense i've been doing a lot of the side quest stuff then i would start the main story and i think that's what's kind of been pushing me back we're currently like 50 plus hours into the game and um there's still chapters six seven eight and a finale <laughs> and i'm like what <laughs> bro well it ain't rpg for nothing but yeah, I've been kind of keeping, you know, the channel to that. So we'll see uh, further developments and how it kind of weaves together with the Dagon Pro channel, if possible, uh, in the near future. But uh, that's kind of it as far as like game pickups and like the plans for the channel, as well as a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I can tell you guys a little bit about uh, the TwitchCon experience. I know I kind of talked about it like on other like, I think other Twitch streams, but for the sake of the podcast, for sure, I can tell you guys a little bit about it. So Anaya and I were the only two that were able to go. Unfortunately, with Phil, like the 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 scheduling for uh, TwitchCon doesn't really align too well in the month of October. Phil's a very busy dude during the month. But Anaya and I were able to drive out to Las Vegas, like we did um, for Evo, and uh, found ourselves a hotel. We um, I had to like really think back on like what happened. Uh, we tried to drive directly to the convention center. Very bad. <laughs> move albeit it could have been far worse we found parking somewhere and we're able to walk in there uh in any other capacity we wouldn't be able to like park there period it was super crowded there was like cars there was a lot of folks walking around but we found ourselves parking like at this restaurant here um it was one of those things where it's like oh you know you should this is like customer parking only and i was like oh shoot well why don't we just duck in and just like grab like grab something and we couldn't even get through the front door. So I was like, well, we had the, every intention to get something, but we couldn't physically actually get inside. So let's go pick up our batch. <laughs> so we go walk over to the side. Um, we go into like these split lines where it's distributed from like partners to affiliates to community, go into our affiliate like section and uh, we pick up our badge. It doesn't look exactly like this. It's definitely like, there's a lot more like, it's a little bit more bare bones to this, but we definitely customize ours. We got that Tanuki snicker, uh, snicker, <laughs> sticker. I don't know why I've been doing. That's the second time I've done that. But I guess he is kind of doing that too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we got the affiliate badge. They'll give you like a label here. Community is like a blue little label right here. Affiliates like this um, magenta like uh, brand, and then I think partner is like the Twitch color purple. Um, you have the username like up here. Uh, I think the scan bar is also just to check out your channel as well. I'm sure. But otherwise you could just take a picture of like someone's badge and look it up manually after the fact. Um, pre last year, they actually had the username in the very dead center of the badge. And uh, I'm glad that they decided to move it up so that you have options just to place things like signatures from other like uh, creators to, I guess what we did, which was a sticker. Uh, I got this cool um, Elgato community like uh, ribbon just by you know talking to the folks over there at Elgato. They actually had the um, well, I guess I should probably I'll probably save that to like when we actually get to that time frame of going inside the convention center. Um, but yeah, I have a whole bunch of all these stuff like this clip on the Bulbasaur. I'll talk about that a little, little bit later. But yeah, and of course they have like the cool danger. I appreciate the fact that you know. They have it set up so that um, it's important to have your badge facing a proper orientation. So this is how they like did it instead of putting like just one hook because it tends to like go like front to back whenever you're walking around. But with this type of system, it kind of keeps it in the proper orientation most of the time. So there is that. But yeah, we picked up our badge, uh, got a little baggy, which like contained a couple of uh, things from sp sponsorships to a little gift of like shoelaces from like Twitch that are they're purple color. So I kind of I kind of do like that. Been thinking about like what's what type of shoe would I even like put this on as far as like the purple lacing? It had to be a, like a specific color. I guess like I guess white and black would either or would probably work out. But um. Yeah, we, we leave the convention center because it wasn't really technically open. It was only, if anything, it was probably open for like partners only, possibly. Um, so we just decided to like head back to the car and just like 
try to squeeze our way out of like that whole mess. And I believe um, we hadn't figured out the exact situation because a lot of people have been talking about their trips going to uh, TwitchCon having just problems just getting there that the traffic really sucked. And to be, to be fair, in that Pacific area, it does kind of suck. <laughs> But we were, where we were staying at, staying at uh, traffic was, I would say, pretty acceptable. And we'll go into that um, a little bit later. But we essentially, we take that opportunity to uh, head out and go to the local um, GameStop, kind of close to the convention center. And um, yeah, this was kind of our plan. We would walk in there and we do pre-orders for Spider-Man and uh, Mario Brothers Wonder. I think for Anaya, it was just Mario Brothers, but I ended up pre-ordering the two since they released on the same day. And we do that, and then we go to um, one of the recommend, recommended like places that Naya had brought up, and that was uh, Big Chicken, <laughs> which I not, not even a front. That's like literally what it's called. Um, so it's, 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 it's a, I'm not sure if you could probably guess it, but it's like it's a chicken place. It's got some like nice stuff here and there. Um, but yeah, we, I remember we placed our order there. We had to wait for a little bit, so I'm glad Naya going forward would like place things like ahead of time but uh i remember that i ordered like popcorn chicken and uh, a specialized side which they called dirty fries which was just like their potato wedges and uh a cheese sauce chipotle sauce on top of that and then like banana peppers which was actually like pretty good oh yeah bacon bits in there too um they also had stubborn brand soda if you guys don't know about the stubborn brand they're pretty good <laughs> And they've been branching out with different flavors, but essentially I love like their root beer and cream soda variants. But in that same like like shopping center, there was a place called Insomnia Cookies. Crazy stuff. Um, it's I mean it's pretty much because they open up pretty late, but um, or stay open pretty late. But um, from there, I just got like their thing of uh, cookie cookies and dream, but it's like cookies and cream, like ice cream. And uh, I got like a six pack of like cookies in like this little box, so that was a uh, that was very nice. That box lasted us for the entire like week. Well, lasted me the entirety of that that whole weekend. And uh, we picked that stuff up. We uh, went back to the hotel, ate a little bit, chilled out, uh, watched some YouTube, and um, we pretty much went back to that GameStop um, probably around like nine p.m to go for their midnight launch and um or i guess like yeah i guess their preview night launch night and um it was pretty uh it was kind of underwhelming but in a good way i didn't really want to like be like crammed up with a bunch of other dudes <laughs> waiting for this game and uh yeah no we just walked in and we just kind of waited until like nine and then they started like giving out the games after verifying our receipts and everything like that thankfully and i was able to get his uh he forgot his receipt <laughs> But he was able to verify with this account, so good on you, GameStop, for just like seeing that potential like thing and getting around that. So we get the games, we head back, and that was pretty much the rest of that night. We didn't really even like open up the games and start playing them. I don't think an I and I either did that. But uh, it was then uh, the following day. We had a very slow like like morning. I think we woke up at around like six, and like. The place isn't like the convention center doesn't open up until like 10 o'clock. So we just had a lot, a lot, just a bunch of time. So uh, our hotel actually had like a kind of an open breakfast type of thing from like six or nine ish, six to nine ish. Uh, we checked downstairs. It was, it was pretty underwhelming. I'm not going to lie. It was like things of like coffee and like snacks. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, this is what we have. Okay. <laughs> So, um, we made plans. We uh, went over to Denny's and Denny's was going to be like, like our, our main spot for breakfast. And, uh, you know what? No regrets on that one. That was actually pretty good. It was a good option to do that. And, um, what did I actually order at that time? We had like, I think I had the grand slam sandwich and I think, and I just got like eggs over my hammy sandwich. <laughs> that was good. And I just had coffee over there too. But uh, from there, we were able to uh, call in for a ride share and uh, actually make it to the very front of the convention center. I think um, that wasn't too bad of a pricing like early in the morning, but it definitely would like pop up in like pricing like 
you know, in the evening. So uh, we get off of that. Um, we spend quite a bit of time in this like snake like line, right? Obviously, it's, it's the first day and we were, you know, it was just about to open up. So we spent a bit of time in line. I remember that um, a few people ahead of me, um, there's this guy who always got like called to uh, take a photo with them. And I was like, ah, oh, damn, dude. Well, you know, and I, if this is, if this is our fate <laughs> at some point, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. But good on him. He got recognized a couple times. He got like a couple pictures and, um, we just pretty much uh, make our way in Uh weird thing about the bag policy. They always say that like no backpacks or whatever is allowed. Uh, but they will accept bags of like 12 by 12 or something like that. Uh, ultimately, you know, if it ain't too big of a backpack, they'll still have to check it. Right. But it's a, it's a pretty like in-depth check for the most part. So, you know, uh, you just get in there like into the building faster if you just don't have anything, which I would recommend. But if you definitely have something you need to like carry with you, like chargers and whatnot, then, you know, you can, you, you should feel free to bring in your bag. They just want to make sure that's a precaution that you can try to like avoid, you know? Uh, I remember that the first thing we do when we walk in, Anaya and I, we went upstairs to pick up like the affiliate gift that we would get. And it was, um, I think I might have it in here, but, um, oh yeah, here's, here are the shoelaces look pretty nice. I think I also have similar, um, ones like this one from last year as well. And I think that's just a given for everybody. Uh, let me see. Oh, um, yeah, here it is. Yeah, they give us these, um, oh, sorry, that's the other way around. Yeah, they're just, like, uh, keycaps, uh, for certain, like, buttons here and there, so, um, they have, the obviously, the space bar button, they have a tab, caps, uh, your Windows button, shift, and, um, I'm not sure about this other, but, <laughs> other key. Oh, actually, no, it's, uh, it's control. You know, it doesn't really say anything, but that's nice. I think partners actually get a different set of keys and keycaps, but they also get keycaps for like a gift for partnership. But, um, you know, after that, I believe the, the main move for, uh, Anaya and I, um, for the most part, we were pretty much conjoined together as far as like us, like w roaming around. We had these jackets, right. Um, that he actually ordered for the three of us, myself, Anaya, and uh phil just to represent like tanuki media and uh, i'm not sure if the patch is over here no it's not over here is it over here actually there no it's the fact that is that the sleeve is like further back here but yeah you could see that that's not the one i was trying to aim for but we also had like glasses here that anaya brought over they're very nice although i think mine don't have actual like shades built into them but yeah it has the um the og mark and design that he had prepped up before, like really refining it and giving it the actual uh, brand image that it has now. So uh, super cool. It also has like our names in the back here. At least, rather, I guess my nickname for Tanuki is Mister Dang It, <laughs> and uh, it has the the zero zero number on it. So, uh, what was I gonna say with that? Oh yeah. So we go upstairs, we get the affiliate uh, thing, and we just kind of roamed around like second floor just to see like what's out there. I think we, I'm pretty sure at some point we tucked into like one of the panels, but, uh, I wanted to make an effort just to go down to the exhibit hall and just kind of see what vendors are out there, uh, this time around. Um, I had every intention to possibly like spend as much as I, I would have wanted, but there wasn't really a lot that I was looking into, especially since I didn't really have like a bag, but I definitely want to check out the Lou cave. And I think we, I think we probably tackled that like first thing. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that was the first thing we like tackled. So we would kind of roam around, see some cool stuff. I think the one of the coolest setups was like the Doritos Mart, like by Fortnite, where you just walk in there, they give you samples of like most likely it was all like barbecue flavor, like Doritos. I do actually have like a full bag like somewhere else, but uh it was interesting because they had just lines and lines. It was pretty much kind of like a like a pop-up like shop for just all Doritos bags just lined up like aisle to aisle. I don't think you were able to pick anything out. I don't think, well, actually I'm pretty sure you could, 
I'm pretty sure you could have because I believe there was just a counter where one they were giving out stuff, but I think they also had just like a card reader. So there's there was a possibility of being able to like just buy something, but we didn't. We moved on and uh, checked in and saw um, a couple things. Samsung was there uh, along the path we were walking. We saw like a Bob Ross session. <laughs> Which was really cool, but right next to it was the streaming station, which I actually hopped on uh, on, I believe, Saturday. Yeah, I believe I hopped in on, like, Saturday, like, somewhere in the afternoon and did, like, a just chatting over there. Uh, we went further up. We saw the Glitch Theater on our right-hand side, which is all curtained up, so you have to actually, like, walk in there and show your badge and everything like that. And you get a pretty sizable, like, little theater where, like, performances and whatnot just kind of show up. Um, I think there was a board game session like to the left of that and going further out to the northernmost part of the uh, building was the artist alley and um, I kind of regret doing this but I also at the same time don't regret it because it would have taken a lot of space but I did see someone making like handmade like knitted like pokeballs of different designs and I was like that hold on let me get a, let me get a bag. <laughs> first and I might come back to it I never did come back to it but I would say that there was a lot of there was a lot of art being shown off there but I don't think Anaya really spotted too many people he recognized in that community for what he has told me that some some of those community members uh, just kind of like up and left and like moved on to like different platforms but yeah I, I'm not too familiar with that type of scene but um, I think we were uh, walked around quite quite a couple of bits and I think this is where like my memory gets a little hazy in which case I'll probably want to check in on like our photos and whatnot okay sorry I'm going a little too far yeah 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 so just kind of catching myself up here food and whatnot the release night uh I, I sent a photo of like me wearing my jacket it's like hey if you spot me feel free to say hi uh we got pins and uh stickers to give out so be sure to do so the convention center, us walking, seeing the sphere, yeah, seeing the sphere for the first time. I think this was also the day that I like I saw it doing its face, its emoting to like everyone. It was very interesting, but it was also really cool because I believe Xbox, um, Insomniac slash play slash PlayStation were promoting Spider Man there too. So like occasionally you would see it at night. You would see the Xbox logo. Uh, another night or hour you would see Spider Man. I thought. That was super dope. Nintendo should have done something. That would have been super dope. I don't think they did though. But yeah, I'm catching myself up here. So we're we're walking around. Uh oh yeah, Naya brought like his uh, lunch bag because that was a very tiny type of thing. But he he pretty much brought his charger and everything for that. Uh oh, that's yes. Okay, so that so I'm glad I took photos just as like a quick timeline thing. But yeah, this is where I got the ribbon, right? The Elgato thing because they had a couple things I wanted to see. Um, their platform six, platform nine, platform nine, three quarters. Uh, but platform six slash nine is their like new uh, desktop. I don't know uh, when they're shipping those out, but they finally have a price tag to it. Uh, TLDR, it's very expensive, <laughs> and it's to a point where I'm like, I don't, I'm not sure if I should, <laughs> because it's like, oh, that's that's money. If I recall correctly, uh, if you just get their standard desk, it's like it's just like around like a thousand, like twelve hundred. <laughs> but if you want to get the full thing, which is like the backboard, the the pegboard with a couple of other like display stands, like at the very tippy top, I think that sets you back around like either thirteen or fourteen hundred. <laughs> it's it's money, dude. <laughs> And, you know, I was, like, totally hyped about it, but I'm not entirely sure if I want to put that much into, like, a desk. Like, the, the desk I currently have right now is just, all like, you know, a standing desk um, uh, through Costco. <laughs> it was, like, $200. So I was like, you know, that's as cheap as I could see it at the time. There's a lot cheaper nowadays. Um, but I'll do that. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. It's, first of all, it's called the Platform 6. And, um, hold on. I'm actually going to, like, take a closer look here as far as, uh, the actual pricings on it. Just to give you guys a more accurate, like, read on it. Uh, oh, oh, God. So to have everything, essentially everything on it, uh, it's like, 
Oh, wait, actually, that number changed a little bit. Oh, oh, they have different... Yeah, they have different, like, models of it. Um, let me see if I can find... Um, trying to see exactly uh, what's the distinctions. So I think the platform desk, the platform desk comes with like these two uh, things at the very back that create like a railing system for you to clamp on your monitors and whatnot. Um, not actually not just your monitors, but also things like your uh, mic arm, your lights and stuff like that. Things that just for content creators, just mounting is like a very like important thing for your setup. Um, that by itself is, I mean, for minus tax is like just under like one grand it's like 99 dollars 97 cents essentially and i'm like bro that's that's a lot <laughs> but to be fair given like how all that is it's pretty impressive i will i will say about that um and i think there's the alternative one where like it actually like will stand up like it rises up i think that adds like additional bits to it and that's 1400 and um I think um, with different designs on the actual like desk itself uh, brings up to 1500 and then I think the entire thing with the backboard and everything brings it up to like 1800 and I'm like, oh! <laughs> In any case, they do have separate like little um, things you can buy from them. So you don't actually have to buy everything. Although the thing I would have wanted was the railing system, which... Yeah, no, you're not getting that without getting the entire thing. Or actually, scratch that. I'm going to scratch that. I believe, um, oh, I think you really could just buy things separately like that. Um, they have like a multi like frame thing here that lets me like mount a bunch of things. Uh, the peg boards, large size for shelves and stuff like that. Um, you know, hmm, not compatible with other desks though. Yikes, yikes, the exclusivity, dude. Uh, I will just tell you right now, it sucks <laughs> as far as the pricing. I would say, I think everything has like a unit phenomenal, but bro. That's a lot. I think at that point, like, if you really want that type of design, you might want to just you either save up the money for it or try to, like, D DIY it in the sense of just getting yourself, like, a standing, like, also flat desk. I should probably mention that. One of my issues uh, when it comes to, like, you know, getting these, like, clamps for, you know, setting up lights or my camera and whatnot is because, like, every single desk I end up getting... Um, is like too thick, and when I mean too thick, I don't mean like with two C's. I mean like inconveniently thick. Like this um desk from Costco, uh, glass top and everything like that. But um, the sides of it where you would normally put a clamp on are way too wide. Like you need a clamp that exceeds three inches, and most of these would be like a little under two of a requirement, and so I I end up having to like do some research and find out like oh actually there are some clamps out there that support like this huge width and height it's just for it's first of all it's, it's super inconvenient but also yeah especially if you look at like stuff from elgato and you're like oh i love i love what they're doing over here but the problem is, is that their clamps are not anywhere near like as high as they need to be from for my particular desk so it's one of those it is what it is <laughs> you just have to like maneuver around it if not spend a little bit more money just for the sake of a like a working clamp of that size um but enough about the platform like desk thing i did want to go to course or oh, course slash elgato uh mainly because they actually had uh demos of the uh the prompter there's something that they announced like more recently within the week prior to um twitchcon and that was um it's essentially a teleprompter um, that acts as like a separate tiny like monitor for your desktop. But the thing is, that as like most prompters are, they have a, a sided like viewing uh, angle for a camera to just kind of like uh, sit through and be able to like capture your face while at the same time uh, a mirror in front of it 
uh, is able to reflect a messaging like messages like displayed from a bottom panel bottom panel display that acts as your like other little display port and whatnot. So essentially, you just drag whatever Windows, whatever chat, uh, integrated chat like through uh, Elgato, and be able to like project that upward and shoot it like at you, so you can just kind of see that while also looking at the camera at the same time. So, I guess. Uh, imagine like how I'm looking at the viewfinder right now as like looking at another person's eyes. Um, but you know, I'm able to actually look at like you guys directly with text showing up like right in front of it. So I can do like ad reads where it's like this, this one, uh, <laughs> this, uh, the bell. Whoa, dude. Well, that, that's the point, right? Like you don't have to ad lib anything, but, uh, you could just say that, uh, this stream is sponsored by, not sponsored by Dinga Productions. Visit the uh, channel and the links below and stuff like that. And you'd be able to like maintain like a constant like eye contact with uh, the viewers and whatnot. So it's like, it adds another layer for the parasocial thing, but it's also just really good for content creation as a whole. So, uh, those units aren't really shipping out. Uh, I think people were able to, uh, get those for free. You know, they participate in Elgato stuff. So there was some giveaways here and there that. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to like really like check into, but you know, in hindsight, I probably would have. But I feel like a lot of my time, I just, just obligation wise, I kind of just stuck with an eye as far as like things we wanted to check out and whatnot. Otherwise, I would have like spent so much time at each booth just to get as much information as possible. But oh man, that reminds me, I heard some s stuff on Twitter as far as like people's experiences. Sorry, that's lunch coming back out again, <laughs> and. Oh, you know what? I actually have my keyboard right here. I don't really need to have that like on me right now. <laughs> but yeah, there there's been some talks about like how people's experience were with TwitchCon. Overall, it's it's pretty positive. But I heard that um I mean, I guess I shouldn't really spread too much like word about it, but essentially, uh I guess what would happen is that there's been some weird communications with certain like content creators versus others. Um the worst fear that I had, which was um I guess this person was uh, talking to a brand, having a full-on conversation, only to immediately have it be dropped one-sided-wise because they saw someone else with a partner badge on them. And it's like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> that, 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 that's not a good, like, look. But uh, aside from that, uh, real quick, uh, the prompter is really cool, and I'll definitely invest in it. Otherwise, you'll probably see those products being shipped out as soon as... December. I think that's probably the, like the coolest little tool that they got since I think maybe the Stream Deck Plus. Uh, speaking of which, actually, uh, it didn't. Ha I don't think it happened the day of. Yeah, it happened like on Saturday or something like that. But I did buy uh, a little Elgato product that I have like hooked up like right now, right now. So, uh, maybe I'll talk about that like a little bit later. But um, kind of continuing on with the uh, the story here. Yeah, no. Um, I took an additional shots at uh, the prompter. Cool little device. Uh, yeah, we definitely checked out uh, Loot Cave, uh, which is, you know, the merch shop for Twitch. And uh, they had different designs, different jackets. I, I feel blah, blah, blah. I feel like there was a lot more um, variations uh, from last year, but not as much like this year. And, you know, that's fair. You know, it, that's, that's fair because I think uh, what they had was still pretty much different from what I already have. Uh, I have a zip up hoodie. I have like this shirt. Um, I bought two pairs of pants, which were $50 each. It, I should really, I should also outline the fact that this stuff is expensive. Like the Twitch merch is like, Ooh, it's money. <laughs> Having said that though, I really do like their, um, their, what you it? Their water bottles here. Although they are still kind of pricey. And I was considering it, but I guess he didn't fall through with it. I've actually, like, decked the, this guy out with stickers this time around. Uh, we got that Tanuki sticker. We got the Dangang sticker, which you can probably actually get. So I should probably better promote that. But I'll just put that out for there. Uh, some stuff from Phil that he gave me. Stickers from um, Nintendo New York. So, cool. Yeah, I think that's kind of it. I, I'm very limited on how many stickers I can put on this guy now. <laughs> Big stickers. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think what we ultimately got out of it, seeing some of the bags here, yeah, that bag came in, like, came in clutch, the backpack that I bought last year, but, uh, they had some other ones that were a little bit more affordable, so that was very nice, uh, but what I did buy was, um, these, uh, 
these pin sets, they are they're typically like just they're just blind pins, so they have a certain selection of those. And you know, whatever you get is whatever you get. Obviously, you can just kind of get a feel for like exactly which one's what. But uh, for me personally, I just decided to go blindly, and I ended up getting those ones. So, and and I got like a different variation. So we stuck those on our like jackets and just kind of went around. Um, but you know, I didn't want to like spend too much on like merch stuff because I already did that last time. Um, we walked around. Uh, Streamlabs was there. Stream Elements was there. I talked to them like later on. Um, there was a big open spot, probably in the center of like of the convention just an open like area where you just like kind of walk around it's pretty much just the same thing i just think that they may not have like enough space there well actually to be fair i appreciate the fact that they actually have walkways where it's just open and there's not a lot of people inhabiting it so if you just need a breather from all that space then there you go but yeah no uh alienware was there i actually think that alienware had like a really impressive like booth as far as like what they got over there, uh, right above, um, they just had a bunch of RBG or yeah, yeah, RBG and it was just, or RGB <laughs> display at the very top. And that just kind of like gives you, uh, an idea of where they're at currently, uh, down below was kind of like a little land part that they got going on there. I didn't jump in and check it out, but kind of nearby it, they actually had kind of in the center of nowhere really, but it was, it was their like little secret, like merch shop. So. Although, like, I, I don't really work too well with them. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait. Uh, no, no, never mind. Sorry. False alarm. I don't know why, like, my memory was being, like, overridden, like, just like that. But I, I did not for a second see, like, my audio levels, like, go anywhere, like, in this, like, scene. So I was scared that I had muted myself at some point. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, merch shop was pretty cool. Yeah, here, here, I think I can actually just show you. I was, um, just sitting across from it. Anaya found, like, a really nice place. Yeah, you can see it's, like, right here. And it's like, oh, look at that. And the colors were changing here and there. But I was, like, across from that, we, um, there was a booth that was pretty much just kind of 1v1ing, um, what was it, the Navy? I'm pretty sure, right? Essentially, it just had like like little um, sets going on where it was like Street Fighter Six, Tekken Seven, a little bit of Call of Duty, Mario Kart, Super Smash Brothers, and um, yeah, you could pretty much just jump in on those and um, go head to head. But um, a little bit around, like across from that, actually, was uh, a place where you can kind of draw stuff, and I drew up uh, Rudy Tanuki, our mascot, for that. So that's a nice little bit. That's where I saw Connor, actually. Sea Dog. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I don't, I don't think I even. I don't think I outright even talked to uh, Mark about that because Mark seems to be following Sea Dog a little more closely than anybody here in Tanuki, or in our group, just generally speaking. But I saw that dude, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool." Like, yeah, that's that was my realization. Like, hey, remember, you know, all these like influencers slash content creators, they're just people just walking around in this scenario granted some of them are irl streaming and whatnot or they have like a different places to be uh, in this case like connor was doing his irl stuff so he was just kind of like chilling out uh, hanging out with somebody um <clears throat> probably drawing something up but uh having a conversation there and i i thought about it like should i get a picture with him or something like that because but the problem is that, like personally i I don't really follow his stuff particularly. I think he's a pretty decent dude from what I've seen, but I don't know him, know him like that or follow his stuff. Like maybe how, I guess, you know, maybe Mark has. So maybe I should have like got a picture for, for Mark or even got like a video message. But I was like, nah, <laughs> I was more like, here, let me get this marker around from you guys. I wanted to draw something, but I ended up not drawing anything. Uh, for uh, Tanuki Media, if not my channel. But yeah, that that happened. And then, um, was that actually the 20th? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, okay. I guess I did. I guess I did do a stream on the 20th, like that Friday. I guess. Yeah. I guess I did the stream there because I have a, a shot of me looking at the uh, the streamer station. 
and this is the same the same shot that I had just posting to everybody. Hey, I'm gonna be live uh, through like at TwitchCon, <laughs> which was a very interesting experience. I should probably talk about that. You pretty much um, have rows upon rows of just PCs set up, where, I mean, actually, you know, in hindsight, it was pretty impressive because it's like these. They're not like shoulder to shoulder like PC setups. There's a fair bit of space between, but uh, they're all like Omen PCs uh, with HyperX like supporting with like their headsets and whatnot. And essentially, you just sign into your Twitch and you can actually just do a live stream just there, for the sake of just live streaming there. They have a couple games like PC games like set up, but um, one of the dudes that we saw um, streaming was actually. He brought his whole Nintendo Switch and he was playing Mario Brothers Wonder. So that was interesting. I guess you could have you could have done that as far as just bring your own game, in that case the Nintendo Switch, and bring your like external capture card. Should have done that. <laughs> but I didn't expect myself to actually like do any streaming like on streaming stations at all because I thought that was a reserved thing. But uh, you know, they um they actually had a similar thing uh, last year as well. Um, I remember that like Games Cage actually did a stream like last year there too. I don't know sure if he did one like at that station this year, but he did last year. It was funny because I was just like I was resting up and like upstairs. It was this was San Diego, mind you, and we were just um because like at that time that's where the beanbags were. That's just where you could just lounge about. So I was just there slumped over, and I just realized oh he's actually streaming right now. It was funny that he's like in like a general area right there. But uh, in this case, um, yeah, I didn't anticipate myself doing a streaming station bit, but I did. But now I at least know what I would probably bring with me um, next time. But yeah, no. So when I got there, I got set up. Uh, it took a little while, though, because they would give you about like 45 minutes to like an hour of just streaming. And then that's when they would like holler at you and in not a weird way. But they would they, they would holler at you and tell you like, hey, your time's up and everything like that. So you got to move on. But uh Still, that's an hour of streaming, which granted doesn't seem like a long period of time. That's how long the podcasts are, actually. <laughs> but which is weird. I should have done that. I really should have done that. But I don't have my source. I wouldn't have like the name podcast source. Okay, I'm just reasoning reasoning to myself that I didn't need to do like a podcast type of thing over there. <laughs> Although I totally could have. I guess they don't have Discord though, right? I didn't see any hint of Discord showing up there, so you couldn't like call on a friend or anything like that. But they did have like games such as uh, Valorant, uh, Fortnite, Fall Guys. I was gonna jump into Fall Guys actually, but I believe the sign in thing is kind of different because you know I only know my Steam account, and um, Fall Guys pretty much like moved over to uh, Epic Games, and I didn't know my sign in information about that, so I didn't know how that would com communicate. So I did just the chatting thing and i got pretty awkward to be honest because even though i was just doing what i'm doing right now um i just kind of like clammed up i felt like awkward my buddy and i was like next to me although he was a big gap like next to me if you if you get what i mean there's just nothing set up in the middle between us um so i spent that time uh both talking to people how my experience was uh, while, <laughs> while stream sniping uh, Phil and Anaya at the same time I tried to get like him to like make some contact eyes with me and <laughs> the results were great I, I think I made a clip about that so that's great but um, at a certain point though I just felt like really awkward and so I ended up like stopping within the 45 minute mark so I just felt like that was okay but I think uh, if I was better prepared I would have been able to stream a little bit longer could have talked about like a bunch of other variant stuff but um yeah otherwise it's really cool uh i would say that the headsets were really impressive granted it, it's of that like quality mic where it's not quite like audio boosted as you would get with like fgc like commentators it's nothing like that profound but i would say as far as just making sure they capture your voice specifically and not someone next to you i think it was pretty good either that or i was pretty loud <laughs> Because I tried to like just talk at like right regular volume at that point. But yeah, I think that was kind of it. Because the next shot I have is us going again to Big Chicken. And we got the... Um, I think I got like the ultimate like meal sandwich thing. Which is pretty much just like uh, more chipotle sauce. Their chicken. Uh, I believe probably like... It, was, it wasn't grilled onions per se. No, it was probably grilled onions. And then they would just 
dunk a a thing not a chunk i wish it was the chunk but they dunked a thing of macaroni and cheese like on top of that and um that was majestic it was majestic i also got like a side of their fries by itself and then like another st- stubborn brand soda it was great and that's when i opened up the um the pin packs to get like the guys you see like right next to me nice pins though and then i think the following morning right uh this is when i wanted to try to promote a little bit more tanuki stuff so i was like hey guys uh we got these pins right here uh follow with like a sticker set so if you guys uh see us um uh sorry guys hold on uh okay sorry about that just send that text message out plans are being made which i'm happy about but also like Kind of sucks I got like pulled out of that um or out of the podcast for that. So uh audio testing, just checking, make sure everything's good. All right, we're good. Um I was still in the middle of this. Oh yeah. I was, I was saying a t- social media like posting to everyone and saying, Hey, if you guys see us, uh we do have stickers and pin sets uh to give out and you know, do that. We go to Denny's again. I get the grand slam in the form of just like pancakes and whatnot. Turns out to be a little bit more filling than just having it as a sandwich. But um, this time we are a little bit more prepared because we're looking into, um, you know, transportation and whatnot. A lot of people were having issues uh, throughout TwitchCon spending like a lot of money, reportedly, on just getting to the convention center. Uh, because I guess wherever they were coming from, a lot of construction was being uh, set up. So that sucks for them because we had figured out our system. We found that... Um, we could totally work with the parking like situation that they got going on because on the TwitchCon app they were um just showing like specific like transit options that they could go for parking in certain areas. But um their uh, platinum parking was like next to the Vegas loop, which if you guys don't don't know, is that underground like Tesla like transit system where um just underground uh these Teslas would just line up for like people. Uh it's it's free from what I understand completely. Uh, but it's cool also because I guess the drivers get paid still for that. And um, they they take people from different like parts of like the convention center, uh, whether they just have to work there or they're just, you know, convention goers um, or to the resort, like to like the west of the convention center. It, it's, it's really cool. So uh, that saved us a lot of money because essentially we would just like park the car uh, for a quick commute there, and we go to the Vegas Loop, and we just find ourselves, like, granted, we would still wait a little bit longer, um, just to even, like, show up at the convention center, but at least we could do that for free, so, solve all our, all our problems for the next, like, couple days, uh, remaining, and uh, we actually got to check out the Vegas Loop thing itself. I will say, if you're not prepared to, like, find yourself, like, in this little tiny tunnel way that's, like, fitted for one car going one way only, um... It's cool. I mean, they got they got lights to just kind of light up the way. Uh, otherwise, it is it does feel a little claustrophobic. So just 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 you know, FYI. And uh, having observed everybody uh, from the convention center bringing in backpacks and whatnot, that's when I like took that as an opportunity to bring in the banner. He has um uh th- oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was like oh what was that text message? But, um, sorry about that. Um, he has his banner for, um, game of the year, which is Liza P to like, first of all, uh, get attention of other people. But also the fact is that when you like lift up the banner, you see our, uh, social media stuff for Tanuki media. So that's pretty nice. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. We went into, um, the glitch theater this time around. OFK was, uh, performing there when we walked in. Uh, OFK was, um, that band, uh, that had a video game, which was, promptly called we are ofk <laughs> and uh after that we uh we pretty much sat around because they had a big old like discussion happening uh after the fact uh and that was uh the great anime debate i don't need to say much about it <laughs> other than the fact that a lot of it was some bowl <laughs> let me see if i can actually give you guys like a look at like what they had here they had naruto right this is like the great anime debate which is pretty much a discussion about the greatest like anime characters in their minds right <laughs> so they got naruto from naruto right no shocker right <laughs> naruto from borto's dad the series 
uh, Hinata, not from Naruto, but from Haikyuu, right? Uh, Goku from you, Dragon Ball, right? Uh, Sailor Moon. Um, and I should probably say Naruto versus Hinata, Goku versus uh, Sailor Moon, Yusuke from Yu Yu Hakusho, Show, uh, versus Guts from Berserk, uh, Killua, um, from Hunter Hunter, and a blank, uh, area which ended up becoming Ash Ketchum because of like community voting. This is live stream, so I guess they, I guess that was voted on. Crazy, right? Uh, Monkey D. Luffy on the far right side in the tournament bracket versus uh, Koro Sensei. Luffy's from One Piece. Koro Sensei's from Assassination Classroom. Um, Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. Jotaro Kujo versus, you know, um, from, uh, sorry, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Jesus. <laughs> um, Edward from Full Metal Alchemist um, versus Light Yagami from, <laughs> like, bro? <laughs> from a uh, death note and then at the very bottom unfortunately it's covered because someone was sitting in front of me um oh it was a aaron yeager from attack on titan versus um a blank slot that people could vote in on it was tanjiro from demon slayer uh tldr um aaron yeager won the entire thing and i was like bro y'all are a mess. <laughs> but yeah that was fun uh okay Sorry, just getting another text message there. Uh, what did we do after the fact? But that was fun. That was fun. Uh, Sinon was there. Anaya's favorite right there. Uh, a couple other people I wasn't really familiar with otherwise. Uh, let me see what else I have here. Oh, yeah, we did jump into another panel. Um, like, upstairs. Because our, our main focus was kind of just attending all these different panels and whatnot and events. Kind of how seeing us get like a f bit of a perspective on like how Twitch kind of like monitors certain things to like certain techniques that you should be aware of. Uh, so in this case, it was the the idea of building a community uh, for this panel. So some insightful stuff. I don't think I learned like too many crazy crazy things, but uh, that was still nice. And then we tuned in for um, a panel. Actually, uh, this one's this one was cool because it. Um, Game Games Cage was there too. Jojo was there. Aru was there. The Completionist was there, which, by the way, he's streaming uh, Indie Land right now. That's crazy. And then Ultima. Yeah, they were doing a um. A, it was the great video game debate, and that was um. You know, it was pretty much like as, as I expected. They had like questionnaire stuff where it was like Mario versus Sonic, which one is it? And then you know, out of this category of like genres that you see on like the uh, PowerPoint, which is your favorite? Personally, it's RPGs for me. So, there's that. We jumped into that one. That was just a fun time for laughs and whatnot. And then I went back to the exhibit hall and checked out, like, Pink Gorilla. Because that's another, um... Well, Cody, the uh, the owner, is the one who typically streams, like, you know, like, at the store. And to give you some context, Cody, like, as an owner, uh, pretty much does Twitch streams running the shop of Pink Gorilla Games. Which has grown quite a bit. And I think, like, out of... Yeah, I'm starting to spit a little bit. Out of a lot of the um, content I see on Twitch, granted, I'm I'm always surprised to see stuff here and there. Once I start like digging like through like the weeds and whatnot, that there's some very unique streams, and I think just running a video game shop is like one of those like very interesting type of like streaming content. So I ended up following their stuff for that, and um, cool that they actually had a presence here because they actually uh, specialize in not just like console like current like games but also retro games as well so um i was able to take a look at a lot of cool stuff i have this uh photo of just like a wall just one of the walls that they had uh nes games uh some other ones accessories SN like snes um i think i see a little bit of playstation here as well uh they have some hyperkin stuff too um, I think some video game guides here and there, magazines, it's, it's a lot. Uh, and I think that was pretty much it. I think we went back and like, you know, we already had, uh, big chicken insomnia cookies. So we had to change it up a little bit. So we went to a place called, uh, tacos, los, uh, Dorientos, Doritos. No, it was Doritos. Tacos Los Toritos, and uh, I think that's a chain restaurant, so it's not, like, independently owned. If not, they have multiple shops set up in Vegas, but there was a, there was a couple of them, like, spread out. But um, I got their carne, carne asada tacos, and we also just, like, got, like, 
like two things of like Little Caesars pizza to couple along with that. And uh, first of all, the carne asada tacos were really good. Like, granted though, I don't have like that type of palate, but it was still really nice regardless. And then, um, yeah, we just had like a standard like pepperoni and cheese pizza. It was it was nothing anything to write home about, but it definitely filled us up quite a bit. And then, um, oh, here's the shot of me. It was a clip of me uh, <laughs> checking out like Phil's and an ice stream. I had that as like a little story a bit. And then we can just fast forward over to um, Sunday, which we, again, we had our last like thing of like Denny's before we heading over. We were a little bit closer to the convention center at the time, but they were definitely not letting people in until like the time was up. And uh, funny enough, we decided to go into uh, the Samsung booth that we didn't do before. We did a lot of photo op stuff, and uh, I was able to take a photo op um, in this like cool little room. It's all it was actually for like a game, but I was like, you know, what? let me do, let me just Photoshop a little bit, and that's that's why I have the profile picture that I have right now. <laughs> And then once you uh, do a couple things, like over at Samsung, you can kind of redeem like a gift prize, which could be like their uh, their earbuds, uh, a smartwatch, or uh, in this case, uh, a mouse pad, which I ended up getting. So I don't know who, I don't know who Faker is, but okay, I, I got a mouse pad. And then we spent the remaining bit of Sunday just tuning in to panels, <laughs> just panels. There was one that happened, um, I believe, around two-ish, and that was the conversation with Dan Clancy, the CEO of TwitchCon, and he was, um, he pretty, it was pretty much just like an open Q and A of just him talking about like the experience, like internally for TwitchCon. A lot of people ended up talking about you know certain issues, some circumstances they find themselves uh, in regards to like their path to partnership, for example. That was another one. Um, some other things <laughs> to be honest i kind of don't remember everything kind of don't remember everything but that's okay i know that at a certain point as we leave after that um anaya decided to take the last day to like <clears throat> whoa i should probably get the chronological events like sorted out we ducked in like across the room to check on the community meetup like panel it wasn't a panel it's was just a like, community meetup of just anime as a general thing um <clears throat> we we walk into that and uh, we just kind of like walk to the side and um i don't know what Nai had planned but this guy approached us um i gotta give props to this dude um i don't remember his name like from memory but he did like a couple things on like my twitter and like our uh, channel as well but uh, dude had the absolute like presentation like set up. He had he went through the barrage of showing us every single social media he's got going on from Instagram to YouTube, his Twitch stuff, um, some tweets here and there. It was like everything. Like that guy. Like honestly, if he was in your corner, uh, keep keep a hold of him because he would be able to just like sell yourself like so effectively. If anything. Just like as a full bulletin page of things. Here's all this. Here's my here's my top ten like favorite female anime like characters, uh favorite anime characters like in general or males, uh favorite video game. Uh the dude had a lot of retro like anime stuff on him, as well as some like video games here and there that were a little bit more obscure. So props to him as well. I will say though, is I mean I I understand it's like it's a com community meetup, sure. I think it should just be a little bit more natural instead of just trying to gush out every ounce of information out there. Granted, circumstances are different. Obviously, this uh, like once in once a year type of opportunity to like kind of drop that stuff specifically at TwitchCon. So I understand that too. But uh, to kind of fast forward just a little bit, you know, he uh, th that guy was a businessman. Like he he gave us every single bit of information and he just hopped out. He he was gone. <laughs> But uh, once he left, um, Anaya had to set up like the Tanuki Media banner. He got his speakers out, and uh, he, <laughs> as we were walking towards the next panel, just like down the hall, um, he brought his speakers up. He was playing the One Piece opening, the One Piece opening, and we just kind of marched all the way to the next panel room. <laughs> and I think the it was our last panel of the day too. 
which was, um, let me see. Oh yeah, it was collaborations. We wanted to see what that was about. And it was about like charity events slash like collaborating with other folks as far as like, um, managing that, playing that out. And that was kind of it. After that, we pretty much, uh, packed all our stuff. And, you know, once we got gas, once we, um, got dinner, we just drove home. Whoa, it was exhausting. I'm glad I requested like that Monday off for that. So yeah. And that kind of fast forwards us to like where we're at, like currently a couple events that kind of went down for sure. Certainly. Um, <clears throat> I remember I, I was playing Sonic superstars and I ended up like finishing that, like the night that I returned or sorry, the following day. And then, um, the whole update to the community guidelines for Nintendo, by the way, that's kind of crazy. Uh, I'm not dabbled in that community as far as tournament stuff, but that does impact people. So, uh, that kind of sucks. But you know, also sucks is the fact that they throw in the, like the secret dub, which was, uh, Mario party three showing up on NSO. So it's like, damn, we can't be mad forever, but also like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then later on, we actually had like an Xbox partnership or partner showcase. And, um, there was some stuff showing up there that, um, piqued my interest for sure. A lot of people wanted arc to show up and well, they got it for sure. Um, showed a little bit more of, uh, Alan Wake 2. So that was actually pretty dope too. Um, but I didn't really get, it didn't really grab my interest for all the other stuff that they got going on. But I think they showed, uh, something I've been seeing a little bit more of on Twitch was, um, I think it's called the final level or something like that. It's a, it's another, like, um, I think it's another like battle royale type of thing. Uh, they just announced that they had a beta. So interesting, interesting stuff. Yeah, otherwise, um, not a lot has been going on, like, on our side. So we're planning to have, like, a meeting, like, tomorrow just to kind of hash out a couple of new stuff. But uh, I think for me personally, it's a lot of uh, self-reflection on, like, what platforms I've been, like, working on and what I need to improve on here and there uh, and what to do in the future. So uh going to be pretty busy. But I, I'm glad I was able to just have an opportunity to sit down and just kind of recap on the TwitchCon stuff because, you know, even though I would say a lot of that kind of stuff as far as the panels and whatnot were something I kind of already knew in the back of my head as far as like, Oh, well based on like what I do and like some techniques here and there, I do know what techniques need to like work, but it's about, um, a lot of discipline. I would say a lot of planning. I think what resonated to me most was, uh, hearing people talk about how they actually have to do this as like their part time. They want to grow, but unfortunately they're very limited and restricted because they have like a nine to five type of job. And, uh, funny enough, there was a, there was a post, well, it's, it was kind of sad too, because, uh, there was, it was just a girl posting on like Twitter slash X about, you know, their frustrations of, uh, Oh, sorry guys. I, I was like, I accidentally, um, possibly triggered something. That was another thing I got after TwitchCon, which is like the Elgato, like pedal. So stream deck pedal. And, um, another thing that I got is, um, actually out there and I didn't even mention it is the Elgato XLR or wave XLR. So everything is just hooked up to that. No longer am I using that other mixer at this time. Uh, but it's come with a lot of like setup because it's a whole, whole new system that I have to work with. Um, that I ended up wanting to like, just change it up just so I don't end up becoming like an old senile old man with my other setup that just works just fine. But uh, I want I just wanted to do a change up on that one. But yeah, yeah, I think I, I resonated a lot with those who are working like a full time and doing Twitch like part time, hoping to do something with it. And uh, everyone, I think at this point, everyone knows. OK, maybe not everyone knows, but so just to reiterate, I think a lot of the growth these days, especially since we're in this um, this time where people are trying to fight for like a place on Twitch or for YouTube. Um, just to garner an audience, because I think at the end of the day, uh, a really cool, like dream aspect is to just be able to just play video games for a living, you know, instead of like work a job that you otherwise wouldn't want to do, you know? And for me, that's, um, the lesson for growth at this point is pretty much to, uh, work with different like social media platforms, work with the algorithms that work on that front garner the audience and then transition them over to other content on your platform. 
And um, I mean, that's like sugarcoating it and shortening up like a lot. <laughs> There's a lot that you have to do, not just like on the side of just making other types of content and planning, but also just like changing how you are, I guess. Because I, I had to do quite a bit of changing as well. But uh, it's nice to have those types or it's just nice to have these types of uh, events go on. So it kind of reconnects you because <clears throat> if you do like stuff like content creation, you do, you might find yourself, uh, if you don't do a community meetup type of thing, uh, you might end up like finding yourself doing stuff like by yourself. And that stuff can be really difficult to like work with um, or even make connections with here and there. So um, I was glad to do that again. And I think um, for next year, um, I mean, I already made, I made a plan going forward or at least a goal to reach partnership. Uh, that's going to be very difficult. <laughs> so that's going to be very difficult because like, yeah, I agree with some people that like that jump from like affiliate or at least the requirements for affiliate to partnership, having like stream a couple days here and there for that month and have a concurrent viewership of like three people kind of like what I have right now and then change that to like doing that a lot more often, but also have 75, which doesn't seem like a large number on Twitch. If you just follow like bigger accounts, but to have just 75 con concurrent viewerships can be kind of difficult if you don't know what you're doing <laughs> or rather if you just stick onto that platform and you just cannot find a way to just stick onto just the one platform. Hence why a lot of, the things I hear about like how to grow involves you like stemming from different um, platforms where it's like you want to sell yourself, but if people don't know who you are, it's hard for them to really get connected to who you are until like you, there is like a good, like foot in the door, AKA like a mutual game that you like, or you provide some type of like bit of content that they're interested in. And then they want to like learn a little bit more about you. And then that's how they transition over. So that's kind of like how I'm approaching it right now. So I'm gonna keep my belt and myself busy like for like the weekend. Um, but as far as uh, things to uh, announce for the future, I think I've kind of like did that with that bit of house cleaning. Got some Tanuki stuff. So that's just helping everybody else like in the group. Um, hoping to uh, do a little bit more on the YouTube side of things, but it's kind of like not too clear aside from maybe sending out some like Let's Plays for like Mario and Spider-Man. Uh, TikTok is going to involve a little bit more content from these guys as well. So I'm kind of straying from the Pokemon path a little bit. And then Twitch is pretty much just maintaining stuff here and there and um, boasting a little bit more about it. But all right, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we're going to call it here. Appreciate everyone for tuning in for this podcast episode. It's been episode uh, 478. Uh, my name is Justin. Have a good rest of your weekend, everybody. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care of yourselves until then, everybody. And hashtag bye, everyone.